Okay, we'll get started here. Jerica, you, uh, we can't hear you. So we'll wait for a second for Jerica to get her microphone straightened out here. Can everyone hear me now? Yep. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2024 Housing Development Solicitation Informational Webinar. Um, today, we'll be talking about the 2024 solicitation and the uh, the funding sources that we'll be using for the solicitation, the pass fail or required materials, as well as introducing you to Zoom grants if you haven't seen that platform before. And then at about 12:50, we'll start doing questions from the Q&A, so feel free to drop them into the box whenever you have them, and then we'll go through them at the end of the presentation. Um, those questions will be added at the bottom of an addendum for the 2024 Housing Development Solicitation. If you have not seen it, it is posted on our uh, ramseycounty.us backslash housing investments webpage. All right, some housekeeping things. As you can tell, we are in a webinar format, so you may have to post your questions in the Q&A section of the, uh, of the webinar for Zoom. And then we're going to be talking about again today the solicitation, which we have many documents that will be on our web page, which is the ramseycounty.us backslash housing investments. Um, <clears throat> Max, would you mind copying that and putting it in the chat just so everybody can have it as a clickable link? This webinar is being recorded, and so uh, we'll record this webinar and the questions, and as I said, they'll get attached to a um, uh, an FAQ that gets attached to the solicitation announcement. Max, you can feel free to go to the next slide. All right, now let's get into the meat and potatoes of this here solicitation announcement. Um, this is our combined solicitation. So this solicitation and Jerka, let's just briefly do introductions to uh, at least me and you. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> I how important that is. Hello, everybody. My name is Jerica Gomez. I'm the multifamily development specialist here at Ramsey County, um, and I work here underneath our deputy director, Max Holdsen, who's going to introduce himself. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Max Holdusen. I'm the Deputy Director of Housing Development here at our Community and Economic Development Department. Um, I'll take kind of the first couple slides and I'll hand it over to Jerica to do the meat of the scoring and um, other pieces there as well. So thank you all for joining. Um, this will be recorded, as Jerica said, and we'll be posting this link online. Um, but it is a kind of a great and pivotal time to ask questions. So. OK, so. Let's dive right into what the housing development solicitation is this year. So this is an annual competitive funding application for affordable housing development. It consolidates multiple funding sources into one application. So basically, it's a one-door application. You do not need to worry about what funding source you're applying for. Instead, um, you'll be uh, applying on behalf of your project, and then staff will um, go through the process of uh, reviewing for eligibility, scoring, underwriting, and then making award recommendations based off of our available funding. Funding awards will result in units, housing units with income and rent restrictions, affordability declarations between 20 and 30 years, and this depends on the funding source. It'll either The funding will either be structured as a loan or a grant, depending on the funding source. And this will have uh, results in compliance with local, state, and federal rules and regulations. We won't go into all of those um, today. and um, some of those will actually like come to light as we build a relationship with you as well. So um, we won't go into every local, state, and federal rule and regulation that may apply to your project today. And then new for 2024. So we see some uh, familiar faces on this call. And so I wanted to call out what is new for 2024. So we have less funding available than 2023. That's kind of the biggest point here. Last year, we did about $20 million in investments. This year, um, We'll be doing less than $10 million in investments just due to um, different kind of funding sources available. Um, 
And a note, we never publish how much funding is available because we're collecting program income up until the very end. And so we want to make that based on the quality and of the applications as well as available funding at the time uh, that we're making project recommendations. So we do not release an amount of a number that's uh, a number for the amount of funding available in the solicitation. Um, a new thing for 2024 is that applicants and organizations or entities can only apply for up to two projects, so only two applications per entity. We have also made some um, tweaks to the financial feasibility scoring, and Jerrica will go over that later in the presentation, and then some tweaks to uh, the lists of required and optional materials. We also have new 2024 architectural and construction guidelines. Those are posted on Zoom grants. This really only applies if your project, um, if Ramsey County is the only government funder within your project. So Minnesota Housing already has architectural and construction guidelines. City of St. Paul, for example, already has architectural and construction guidelines. So really if Ramsey County is your uh, lead or sole funder for your project, um, then these architectural guidelines would be triggered. So just a quick kind of rough timeline here. So this was published on Friday, February 2nd, 2024, and responses are due March 15th, 2024. So that's a six week period to um, gather your materials and submit your applications. Awards will be um, in the May, June uh, timeframe. Um, the first awards that would be uh, first recommended awards that would be considered by our board would be uh, the CDBG and Home Awards, and that would be in early May, and then uh, other funding sources would come after that. Again, the most important website is ramseycounty.us slash housing investments. And I'll hand it over to Jerrica. Thank you. I'm going to go over some of the eligible activities underneath these funding sources. One is the acquisition, rehabilitation, or construction of permanent general uh, occupancy rental housing for low to moderate income restricted renters with a minimum of two rental units, which may include permanent supportive housing. We'll ca call that A. And then B is a pool of funds for the acquisition of existing housing units for affordable home ownership by low to moderate income restricted residents by nonprofit or city partner agencies, we'll call that B. And then the new construction of affordable owner occupied units for sale on the open market or through an existing nonprofit's home ownership program, we'll call that C. These definitions got a little bit more specific as you can see, you know, we get a little bit more um, defined as the years go on. Uh, and entities may only submit two applications per solicitation. So that means um, you, in any in any category, you may not you may not submit any more than two applications in the whole entire suite of categories. So that does not mean just two A's, two B's. No, you have two for all of them. Okay, I just wanted to make that clear because that was a question inside of our community meeting where we held this. Max, you can feel free to go on to the next. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to type them into the question um, section of the webinar. We'll have four different funding sources this year. We have the American Rescue Plan Act funding, um, which has been reallocated. Uh, so it, we, we shouldn't have that in this solicitation, but it is going to be there. And then we have Housing and Redevelopment Authority funding, which is available for City of St. Paul. So ARPA, City of St. Paul, HRA, City of St. Paul, and suburbs. Um, ARPA, City of St. Paul, and suburbs. So these are more flexible funding sources. And then you have CDBG and home, which are just gonna be in Ramsey County suburbs. Some of the requirements that are going to be attached to any funding that's coming out of these solicitations are prevailing wage for anything over $25,000, affordability monitoring, and then um, 2024 Ramsey County architectural guidelines, which Max mentioned are brand new guidelines that we'll be following if, you, if we are one of the only government sources inside of your project. HRA levy. As I said, this is more of a flexible funding source. So you can be in city of St. Paul or the suburbs and the eligible uses of HRA. And by the way, you do not choose a funding source. So you just send in your application and then we pick which funding source most is applicable to your housing, um, your housing activity. And so eligible uses include the production, acquisition, development, conversion, and or rehabilitation of permanent rental housing units, 
or permitted supportive housing, construction of affordable owner occupied housing and the creation of funding pools for the acquisition of existing housing units for affordable home ownership activities. And this limits to the amount of funding for the affordability gap. Um, so uh, we'll have more defined terms for the affordability gap and how we'll be able to cover that a little bit later in funding is structured as a loan or grant. This is at the sole discretion of the county. Um, priority is given to projects with units targeting low to extremely low. Um, what that means is 30% to 50% area median income. So you, um, so we're going to prioritize those uh, activities for HRA levy. And then they must close within 18 months of award. And that just means that they must have all of their financial gaps closed prior to 18 months from March. Max was 18 months from March. Um, June so let's say you receive your, let's say you receive your HRA award in June, 2024. So 18 months from that would be like December, 2025. Yeah. 2025. No, yeah. 2026. So you get 18 months after award to uh, execute our agreements and close your funding. You're right, you're right. Okay, okay. So 2025, so December 2025. Not available in the city of North St. Paul because the city of North St. Paul did not elect to have HRA. Next slide. 2024 housing development solicitation funding that are government-based um, are CDBG and home. As I said before, these are for suburban communities. Um, the uses will be acquisition or rehabilitation of affordable residential buildings for CDBG. CDBG funds may be structured as a loan or a grant, and again, at the discretion of the county. And they carry an affordability term of 20 years. Um, and they must be affordable to, you, to residents who are making 80% or less of the area median income for MSP. And then home is the target area restriction of suburban communities also because it is a because city of St. Paul has their own uh, funding allocation of home. And then we are able to use home for pre-development soft costs um, for the new construction of affordable rental housing. And it is structured as a low interest loan with a minimum of 20 years of affordability. Um, and it has a couple of other restrictions and you know, you'll learn more about them when you go to the website for a home that is listed on the solicitation announcement. So um, I just wanna remind you guys that the solicitation announcement will have more information inside of it. This is more of a overview, overview of what the solicitation has inside of it. And yeah, yeah, we'll review this so that you can ask any questions that you have now. Next slide. All right, I feel like we did ARPA. No, we did. So 10% of your units for ARPA must be affordable at 30%. That means if you have 200 units in the in the apartment building that you're applying for, then you would need to have 20 of those units be affordable at 30% AMI to qualify for ARPA. ARPA is, is available in both suburban and the city of St. Paul. So um, this is structured as a 0% 30-year deferred loan. And uh, you must close by December 31st, 2024. That is very quick. And the reason for that is, is because we have to spend this money. Otherwise, uh, it will go back. And we don't want that. We want to create the housing units needed. All right, what's required? We have added a couple of things inside of this um, slide. So I just want to make sure that everybody is aware it's always been required, the multifamily workbook, otherwise called Performa, but I just wanna talk a little bit more about what we wanna cover in the Performa. So we wanna make sure that we're covering debt coverage ratio for up to 15 years. We wanna make sure that we understand um, the income limits, the income restricted limits on each unit. Um, and we also wanna make sure that uh, we can track your sources and uses within your multifamily workbook. Um, your, your responses to the Ramsey County Equitable Development and Livability Questionnaire are very important. So we want to make sure that you're answering those questions succinctly and as detailed as you can. Imagine if somebody was applying to you for a million dollars, what kind of level of detail would you want? And then apply that to your questionnaire. Um, 
the acknowledgement letter is just going to say that you understand some of the guidelines in which you're going to have to follow. So you're going to make sure you attach that to your application via Zoom grants. And we'll talk about Zoom grants a little bit later. And then your lobby certification form, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> you'll sign that and you'll attach that to your uh, into your application. And then just something that's brand new, we're adding project description. And the reason why we're adding project description because we wanna make sure that our interdisciplinary um, reviewers of your application get to have the best overview of your project. And so in the Zoom grants application, which we'll go over a little bit later, as I said before, questions one through 12, go over your project description a little bit more. I'm gonna have you take questions one through 12 and also provide them as a narrative so that they can go to the scoring team and they can see a little bit more about your project as they are scoring it. You wanna be as distinct as possible and you wanna answer these questions very clearly because um, they're going to be read by people who may not have ever heard of your project before. Next slide. All right. So those five materials are required, and these are additional materials that do count towards your score. So the five materials, if you don't pass those in, then you won't get scored. You won't get evaluated at all. But these materials here, these are supplementary or additional materials that will count towards your score. So you wanna make sure if you can include these things, you do. We have your project schedule. And here we have a list of what we're looking for when we say project schedule. Like, what does that look like for you? What is your project close date? What is your tenant lease up? From those pieces to those pieces, we wanna make sure that you know what that looks like for your project. And projects are like fingerprints. They're all very different. So we wanna make sure that you know that this is kind of how we're tracking project schedule. Um, you could add more elements to this, but this is what we're looking for. And then uh, organizational capacity worksheet. This is a brand new worksheet that we as Ramsey County are providing um, so that you can tell us who's on your team. What does your team look like? What did your team build look like? Uh, I would suggest you fill this information out because your organizational capacity is scored at 10 points. Um, and if you have a strong team, you wanna make sure that we know that you have a strong team. Your market feasibility analysis and plan. If you have that, um, your applicant's financial statements, your detailed project budget, your explanation of funding sources and uses, your commitment letters from other lenders or funders, you also wanna have that listed in your sources um, as, <clears throat> as committed funding or plan funding, and then architectural drawings, bids and specifications, site improvement plans, project scope of work if applicable, photos of project site. What is the difference between project schedule and project scope of work? A project scope of work will tell me what you're getting fit, fixed if you're doing a rehabilitation. So if you're replacing some windows, what does that look like in your in your units? How does that look for your, uh, your tenants uh, if you have lease up um, and thus forth? Photos of your project site. This is very easy. If you already have ownership of the project, send me some pictures so that we can see, okay, so this is, this is what this looks like now. You know, uh, this helps us to you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. So if you can't attach it, attach it. Evidence of site control, um, unless for acquisition under special circumstances, I wanna see that you have a, um, a deed or a, a pending purchase application, um, a purchase agreement, I'm sorry. Um, I wanna see something that says that you have control of this place. Ramsey County's funding is not for shopping. So we won't be giving any shopping that is not attached to a project address. 15-year um, performa projections, I mentioned this earlier. Um, this should be included in your multifamily workbook. Uh, we have attached the new 2023 multifamily workbook into the, um, into the application. If your project doesn't really have uh, multiple units and you want to use a like single family, for instance, for home ownership, multifamily workbook, just make sure you're covering all of the things that we're asking for to be in a multifamily workbook in that workbook. Detailed housing unit breakdown. Um, this is your income restriction. What does that look like for each unit? Um, as we look at different funding sources, we realize that this is really important for us to know what, um, what level of area median income you're targeting um, and how you plan on covering uh, your expenses and their, your gaps. Your occupancy fill projections, which are also included in your multifamily workbook, your tenant data if applicable, and your zoning and land use documentation. 
not to be confused with a resolution or letter of support for local municipality. These are two different documents. Next slide. All right, now let's get into the meat and potatoes. How is this um, solicitation going to be scored? So we have 30 points for strategic alignment, affordability, and financial feasibility. So these are all, equal, they all equal the same. And then you have 10 points for organizational capacity. Um, we will go into a multidisciplinary scoring committee uh, and score each project uh, against these four criteria. Max, you can go to the next slide. Strategic alignment is how does your project align with what Ramsey County has already said that we would want? If this is your first solicitation, Ramsey County has a couple of documents that guide our priorities and goals. Um, Ramsey County's strategic priorities is one of them. Ramsey County's economic competitiveness and inclusion plan is another um, way that we are tracking these goals uh, for creating affordable housing, um, establishing livability, as well as just understanding our constituency and what they're looking for in the areas that you're applying for. So uh, be very succinct in these answers. I don't want one sentence to two sentence answers because um, these are going to be your, your entirety of your strategic alignment score. So you wanna answer these questions very succinctly. I can't be more more descriptive about that. I want I want to have all of the little pieces. So um, 40 points or 30 points, response to all equity development and livability questions has strong understanding of equitable development framework, project scope and deliverables aligned to the ECI plan. Proposal connects to recommendations in the deeply affordable housing engagement summary report. That's how you get max points. Uh, answers to the equity, uh, equitable development and livability questions may be missing some context. Um, you can get 10 to 19 points and then insufficient responses to all or the equitable development and livability questions, zero to nine points. You see how quickly you can get less and less points. So I want you to be as succinct as possible because this goes into your entire, uh, the, this goes to the entire team and each person is going to be rating you uh, off of what they read. Next slide. Affordability. This is more of a math. Uh, this is more of a math question for us. So it's, 20% of your unit's income restricted at 30% AMI, that's 15 points. Is less than 10% of your unit's income restricted at 30% AMI, that's, or more than 10%, I'm sorry, um, of your units restricted at 30% AMI, that's 20 additional points. Now, going into this scoring, um, we have changed a couple of things. So thinking about 50 to 90% of your unit's income restricted at income, at 50% AMI, that's five points. Are all units income restricted at 30% or 50% AMI? Units affordable without additional rental subsidy. What's rental subsidy? Let's think about things like um, housing choice vouchers, like um, uh, housing support. So these are subsidies that are from other government entities. So that could give you an additional five points. Do you see 60% AMI here? Do you see 80% AMI here? No. Um, that means that if you have all 60% or 80% AMI, you may not get any points in the affordability category, um, just, just as one criteria. And then I just want to say one other thing on the uh, income restriction without 30 or 50, uh, at 30 or 50% AMI without additional rental subsidy. We've seen uh, applications in the past that are dependent on the recipient, uh, dependent on receiving project-based vouchers, um, which are, um, designated by the Public Housing Authority. And we know that um, not every project is gonna receive those. And so if your uh, deeply affordable housing is dependent on something that we can't provide, um, you do not receive these five points. So it's really like, hey, I'm proposing 30% AMI units and your subsidy that you're providing us is enough to make that happen. So those are those additional points. Any questions, please feel free to post them in the question and answer section of the web. All right, financial feasibility, another math question. Um, as we think about this quantitative analysis, we're gonna be looking at things like your total development costs, your number of units, your cost per unit, your amount that you're requesting from Ramsey County, your amount that you're requesting from other subsidy or other entities, 
as um, well as your amount per unit, your uh, percentage of committed funding. Um, we're going to be looking at specifically price points, right? Are your units under $280,000 a unit? That's how you get 15 points. Are your units between $280,000 and $310,000? That's how you get um, 10 points. And then are your units um, over 310,000, but equal or less than 340,000, that's how you get five points in this area. Added some new categories to financial feasibility, and that is applicant has an existing county award from a previous solicitation and can close by December 31st, 2024. Where have you seen that date? <laughs> that is the ARPA spend by date. So we want to make sure that um, if you can close before December 31st, 2024, you list that in your application and you show us that uh, through um, your strategic alignment answers as well as your project description um, and explain that in your closing date. That means that you have no further gaps and you're ready to close right now. And again, you don't apply for funding source. So, um, We'll choose that for you. Just make sure you let us know, or make sure you you depict in your um, in your performance that you have at least ten percent of your units at thirty percent AMI, um, and you can close before December thirty first. And then, applicant provides either a resolution of municipal support and or a letter of support from municipality staff. This does not include uh, elected officials. So I want something from like a resolution from a city, or I want. A, uh, a, a letter from the city in which you're applying for or uh, municipality that you're applying for saying that they know about your project from their staff, not an elected official. All right, we talked a little bit about this worksheet earlier. Um, it will be included in the, uh, the documents library on the Zoom Grants website and we'll go over that a little bit later. Organizational capacity is 10 points in this solicitation and it responds to, uh, the worksheet will help you to respond to um, the organizational capacity questions. Uh, and so we're hoping that you guys use this supplementary uh, material because it will help you get the best score for your organizational capacity, especially if you've already done that work. Um, if you partially, partially respond to the organizational capacity, worksheet and you still have a couple of gaps, that's four to six points. If you don't respond, you could get um, as little to zero, or if you don't respond succinctly, um, up to three points for organizational capacity. So that takes seven points out of your application. And again, this is an extremely competitive process. All right, Max, I'll pass it over to you. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go, I'm going to exit out of the PowerPoint, and then we're going to go on to our Ramsey County webpage and kind of use that as our launching pad into Zoom grants. So I'm going to stop sharing here. And I'm going to go to my Chrome browser. Okay, Jerica, can you see my screen? Okay, so I'm going to go to ramseycounty.us slash housing investments, which is our kind of landing page uh, for all things housing development solicitation. And you'll see the title on here is affordable housing infrastructure investments. It talks a little bit about our county goals, what the eligible projects are. Um, and the funding solicitation. So this apply now button will actually bring us right to Zoom grants. So we'll do that. Another way to reach that is if you open up how to apply, there's another link that brings you to Zoom grants. Um, so we'll do that in a second, but just holding on this website, we also see our requirements listed and here's the link to the housing development solicitation notice. So that's this year's solicitation notice and it provides um, all the information we went over today and a little bit more as well. Um, and then you can see past funding awards. So if you're like, I don't know how much to apply for. So we do not have a maximum or minimum amount that you can apply for, but you can look at our past awards from previous years to be like, oh, it looks like they're giving between, um, awarding between a couple hundred thousand and a couple million. So I feel like my ask is within that range. 
Um, and then it gives the timeline for the solicitation. So here we are today on February 5th at the webinar. And the next deadline here on the uh, table is March 15th when your responses are due. Um, and then we will be posting this webinar, the slide deck, and the FAQ that will be um, an outcome of this webinar on this page as well. So always kind of come back to ramseycounty.us slash housing investments. And then here on related resources, um, we heard Jerrica speak about um, strategic alignment, and that was the equitable development framework, uh, the economic competitiveness and inclusion plan, and the deeply affordable housing initiative. Um, and those are all there. So you can click through there and make sure that um, you have all the information you need to respond to those strategic alignment um, related questions. Okay, so I'm going to click into Zoom Grants now. So let's go to Apply Now. So it brings us to Zoom Grants directly on this page. Um, you can see you're in the right place. If you see the Ramsey County uh, logo on the left hand. And right now, we're not logged into any account. This is just if you were to click on it without being logged in. And so we're going to use my uh, dummy account here and um, go in from an applicant's point of view. Calm. Okay. okay, it looks basically the same, but now I'm logged in as Max. Um, sorry, there's a little fly bothering me right now. Okay. <laughs> um, so first it goes through the description of what the solicitation is. A lot of this information you'll notice is the uh, same as what's in the solicitation notice. So we really reiterate the same language over and over again. Um, so we have the description of the solicitation. We Max, have the report. I just want to add, if you scroll, yeah. you'll see that the deadline is 316, but the deadline is 315. It's just that with Zoom grants, it have, it'll close at midnight if I have it at 315. So it is, 36, it, it is 315, it is not 316. And we will manually go in and close it at 4.30 p.m. Um, so applications are due at 4.30 p.m. on March 15th. Yeah, good call, Jerrica. Um, okay. um, I will so bold it. I'll bold it in the Zoom grants just to make sure everybody sees it uh, later on. Sorry about that, Max. No, that's great. Um, so uh, and then we go through required materials. So again, you have to make sure that your project is one of these three eligible uses that Jerrica went over earlier. So either A, B, or C. And then you have to make sure that you submit the five required materials that Jerrica went over, the multifamily workbook, the equitable development livability questions, AKA attachment A, attachment B, the acknowledgement letter, attachment C, the lobby certification form, and then the project description questions. And then next is additional materials. So here are all the um, pieces that Jerrica went over that are not required to submit your application, but may affect scoring. And that includes things like the organizational capacity worksheet and other kind of pro potentially project specific things. So um, making sure that you um, submit that what you need um, of these additional materials for your project. And again, these uh, additional materials may affect scoring. And then we go over the same information of uh, what's available in the funding sources. We provide some links if you want to do further research onto any of these uh, funding sources, as Jericho stated earlier. And then we get into the different scoring criteria that Jericho stated earlier. So, and then we have what we're calling the resource. This is kind of like the document library or resources for solicitation. So everything that you need to submit will be posted here. So you can see that there's a, um, a template for the multifamily workbook. There's the um, template for the equitable development livability questions. So you'll download that and then fill it out. Um, attachment B, attachment C. Um, here is the 2024 housing development solicitation announcement as well. So you can have a copy of that. You can either download it here or on the, um, on the webpage itself. Here's the organizational capacity worksheet. And let's say um, just as a if you're curious or want to make sure that your project aligns with Ramsey County's architectural guidelines, those are posted as well. And so now that that's all the basic information, I'm going to press apply now, start application. And so now I'm starting an application. It always kind of brings you back up, so you have to scroll back down. And this is where I'm going to start to uh, fill in information regarding my project. So first thing is you always want to put your project name. So I'm going to call it Max Flats, and I'm requesting um, $500,000. 
and then I that's kind of the first add there. Um, let's see if it lets me go next without filling in everything. Um, So then you can see we get into eligibility determination. And again, it brings you all the way back up to the top. So always scroll all the way back to the bottom. And then you'll see eligibility determination. So we have to make sure that you are either um, applying under Part A, Part B, or Part C. So that is, are you general occupancy rental housing? Uh, do you have a minimum of two rental units? Or are you applying for a pool of funds for the acquisition of existing uh, housing units for homeownership? Or are you applying for the new construction of affordable owner-occupied housing? So you have to say, make sure you're one of those eligible things. And then this is where you would um, upload your required documents. Um, so you will see that, hey, you have to upload your multifamily workbook here. It's required. You'll upload it here. Um, attachment A will be uploaded here. And attachment B will be uploaded here as well. At this point, I won't be able to move on to our next piece because I will have to upload those pieces before I can um, uh, fill out additional things. But let's see if I'm able to override that right now. And yes, so um, here are those components that are also required. So this is um, the project description questions that Jericho spoke about. So these are questions one through 12. You wanna make sure that you're filling these out and why this is important one time, We've seen applications where someone just went, describe the project in NA. And so then the reviewers go, I don't really understand this project because they didn't tell me about it again. And it like, um, so this is a really important opportunity to reiterate your message. Um, so you always want to um, say, describe the project. Um, I am proposing a 14 unit uh, rental apartment building in downtown St. Paul. And it, and it will have all units at 60% AMI. And I am targeting, I'm just making this up. And I'm targeting um, uh, seniors over the age of 55 and all units will have um, universal design with ADA components. You know, you're writing about these in your livability questions and, and other documents as well, but we want to make sure that you are using your application to the fullest um, extent as well. I forgot to mention that many times your application will be reviewed by a multidisciplinary team. However, they may not see all of the pieces of your application. So you want to make sure that you reiterate all of your project description throughout your strategic alignment and your um and your project scope, your project uh, schedule, so that we know um, all that we can about your project. And these are not the same documents, so reject the idea that you can just copy and paste it all in the same questionnaires because they'll be a little bit different each time. And so just going through this project location, my project is located at 50 West Kellogg Boulevard near the corner of Wabasha and Kellogg. And my parcel, the parcel ID is, this lets us know exactly where it is. Sometimes uh, we've seen applications where they just say, where they don't give us the specific address and then it becomes unclear and we have to follow up with the applicant um, if they own the site or not. So just really ran that type of information is important. Has the project received all uh, approvals from local jurisdiction? This is not, it doesn't, you don't have to have the answer yes, but we need to know if you've already started to go through your um, zoning or conditional use um, process with the city. Um, because cities, uh, you know, cities control land use, counties do not. So we, we have to work with whatever city. And so we'll want to know where you're at with that process. Um, is the project comply with applicable local city and state codes? We'll make that edit as well. But um, 
yes, we've already started going through, I would be typing something along the lines of like, yes, I've already started working with the city of St. Paul on zoning. And I am, um, I understand the um, requirements around uh, watershed districts and blah, blah, blah. So you're starting to think about what are those other federal and state and local codes? Um, number five, does the local municipality have a prevailing wage policy? Um, so does the local city have a prevailing wage policy? So if you're building the city of St. Paul, you go, yes. Um, a lot of the suburban communities do not have prevailing wage policy, so you'd write no. It's a reminder, too, that Ramsey County does have a prevailing wage uh, ordinance. And so regardless of a local jurisdiction, let's say let's say city of North Oaks does not have a prevailing wage um, ordinance, Ramsey counties would still apply to that. So, um, so it helps you think about, does your city have a prevailing wage policy? Um, and then this helps us think about taxes. So um, let's say you're a vacant lot. So the there's only $700 in taxes being there now. But when I'm done, the building's going to provide $30,000 worth of taxes. Um, so that helps us think about economic impact of your project. Um, you know, you want to consider um, and work with any technical assistance you may be uh, receiving on 4D, which is the tax status. And so let's say 30,000 is my um, amount without 4D, but you know, I'm working with a tax attorney and they said, I can, because I have affordable housing, I only have to pay $7,000. So we wanna see that reflected within your multifamily workbook. And then we'll compare that to your answer in number six. Um, number seven, um, this gets to that question around rental subsidies. Are you working um, to um, access any rental subsidies through either the Public Housing Authority or Ramsey County or your units? So housing support is through Ramsey County and we do check with the department that runs our housing support program. This is usually was formerly called GRH, if you're familiar with that. Um, we do check with that and are heading home Ramsey to make sure that those your request is aligned. Um, and then if you plan on requesting VASH vouchers or housing choice vouchers or FUP vouchers, um, those are other options as well. Do you, intel, do you intend to sell the project upon, upon completion, which is allowed, right? So it doesn't say yes or no, no, you're banned from applying, but we just wanna understand if you're building this apartment building to then sell, or if you plan to operate it yourself. Um, do you have substantial control over the pop, uh, project site? So this is really around um, what Jerrica uh, spoke about, about ownership of the site. Do you have a deed of the site? Do you already own it? Do you have a purchase agreement? Um, and uh, unless under very unusual um, acquisition circumstances, we do not provide funding um, for shopping of a property. So you really have to be eyes on, you're applying for a specific property and you're demonstrating site control. Um, number 10 is around uh, contracts for construction. This will let, lets us think about uh, federal requirements around bidding and also um, will kind of align with your organizational capacity worksheet as you describe who's working on your development team. And then uh, 11, do you intend for property to be used as a permanent address for yourself? You cannot live in the home that you are applying for, so you cannot uh, request money to build a single family home and then live in it yourself. Um, so this is really around question, uh, eligible uses B and C. And then um, again, this is going back into that eligibility determination. And so that are those are the required components of Zoom grants. So you'll see places to um, you'll see places to upload materials um, in that resources for solicitation. Let's go back down to that. That's a key area. So here's the document library resources for solicitation. You're able to download these things, fill them out on your own, and then re-upload them. And then you're able to um, uh, upload information and fill out questions about your project itself. So that is Zoom grants. Um, again, we start at the Ramsey County website, you press apply now, and then you log into your account from there, and then you're able to um, start to access your um, application. You do not need to fill out your application all at the same time. It automatically saves as you're working, so you can always come back to it. Um, and yeah, so we'll stop there on the Zoom grants um, piece, and we will um, now accept any questions. Um, and I see we do have one in the Q&A.
Uh, Malika Billingsley uh, asked, is there a way to see the questions before submitting that an application can answer them in a separate Word document and copy and paste the responses into the online forms? Um, yes, that is possible and we can add that to the FAQ. So we'll just create a list of all the questions and put them in the FAQ as well. But we still want that filled out. Um, we still want that filled out in the um, Zoom grants. So you have to fill them out in Zoom grants. Don't just do another like PDF document of the questions. Um, Kate is requesting um, to see the funding streams of the slides again. Yes, I can share that. Again, this is a one door. Um, this is a one door application. So you're not going to be applying for a specific funding stream, but instead um, you will apply based off of your eligible use. And then Ramsey County staff after scoring will connect uh, recommended projects to funding sources. So let me get there as well. Kate, when you're asking for the funding streams, did you want to see a specific one? Because we have a list of the funding streams and then we have um, some more details on each funding stream per slide. If we can just go to, um, yeah, like the, can you go back one slide if possible? There we go. Okay, I just can't remember. Yeah, it just gives me a good picture of where, what is involved in this versus the CDBG grant for that you guys have the information session next week for. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to differentiate yeah, between the two. This is for Suburban Ramsey, the so CDBG, CDBG one. CDBG, we can't, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> CDBG or Community De Development Block Grants um, has a housing section as well as a services section. So you're seeing the housing section right now. Um, there are services dollars and that'll be in the next solicitation. Got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'll just go to the CDBG slide here. Um, so for this solicitation, CDBG funds are restricted to the rehab of affordable residential buildings. So really, let's say you own a um, 40 unit, uh, let's say you're a nonprofit and you own a 40 unit apartment building in suburban Ramsey County, CDBG may be a good source for us to connect to your project because it can be used to rehab that apartment building. Um, there are other eligible CDBG uses, but not in this solicitation. Thank you. Okay. We're going to leave the floor open for questions because we want to make sure that if you have your questions, we can answer them here. Um, as the solicitation is open, we cannot answer project specific questions. Um, so we want to make sure you, if you have questions, you can ask them here. You can still send me questions within the next week and they will get attached to the frequently asked questions addendum that I mentioned earlier uh, to the solicitation announcement. As a reminder, um, the solicitation announcement can change. With some of the questions, sometimes we uh, we revise some of the solicitation announcement materials. So you wanna make sure you you have the, the latest solicitation announcement. So if you download that on your computer today and the frequently asked question addendum is attached on the 12th, you wanna make sure you re-download that again because it'd be a little bit different from when it was first published on the second. Um, we have another question in the chat. Are there any resources for pre-development funded? Um, so the answer is kind of yes and no. So the no is there won't be uh, resources that are available before uh, the execution of all of your funded sources uh, for pre-development funds. So let's say you were like, hey, I'm hoping to apply for $20,000 to pay an architect and I'm hoping Ramsey County could fund that component before I even kind of hit the closing of the rest of my... Um, construction financing? The answer is no. However, you could bundle the costs of your architect or other pre-development soft costs into your final closing with your other uh, financial uh, uh, resources and other financial closings. So let's say you have um, your private first mortgage and you have City of St. Paul funding and Ramsey County funding. 
you could um, apply your Ramsey County funding to pre-development, but it would all have to close at the same time. So it probably wouldn't close until right before construction. So you'd probably have to front that and then get reimbursed um, through the Ramsey County dollars. In suburban cities, you could apply for um, soft costs, specifically architectural or, or you know anything soft costs, but not breaking any ground. Um, and you would possibly allocate that to home, but not in the city of St. Paul. And that is just for affordable rental housing. Ryan asks in the questions or in the chat, hold on, sorry, Ryan, I didn't see that. For the ARPA funding, does the entire project need to be completed by the end of the year or just close on construction financing? Um, so it just needs to be, our agreements need to be executed by the end of the year. So you do not have to have started your construction already or have spent the money already. You just need to bring uh, all of your construction financing to close. So, which uh, we're defining as um, executed Ramsey County agreements. And that means that all of your gaps need to be filled. You need to be ready to go with that project. Oh, James has his hand raised. Sorry about that, James. I didn't see that. Were you going to ask a question, Mr. Barnett? I'm sorry. I was trying to come off uh, mute. Just just to be clear then. So if, if we already own like a 20-unit building that we are hoping to rehab or do something to, you guys would still be placing the project description aligning to the appropriate funding. So if we think we're on to something, I'm sorry, you accidentally pressed mute, I'm sure, because you're still talking. Okay, sorry about that. Um, is there a way, I don't know where I left off, but I guess starting over, uh, is there a way to, um, I know you said you can't give us feedback on our projects once they um, are past a certain point, but is there a way that we can get some early context or, or some sort of context or feedback on whether or not our project is aligning in the right space so that since we can only submit two? So um, to answer that question, so the uh, rehab of an existing apartment building is an eligible use. So you it would fall under eligible use A. And um, and using this webinar and the slide deck, you'll be able to see the potential scoring. So as you work on your multifamily workbook, you could, um, knowing that you have an eligible activity, could start to kind of play with the scoring through the information we provided today. Um, as long as you meet um, one of those eligible activities and turn in the five required materials, we will score and review your application. Uh, but we can't uh, provide feedback if that's the type of application we uh, if you have the most competitive type of application or we can't provide feedback like, hey, I would tweak five units of this to a different AMI so that you get higher points. We won't be able to provide any feedback like that. Got it, got it. As a reminder, before the solicitation is open and generally after awards are given, we do have that opportunity to meet with developers to talk to them about their project specific questions, just not right now. So the application is open. It'll be open until March 15th. Um, in July, we'll be able to meet about project specific questions. June, July. We have four minutes left in this meeting, so I want to make sure if you have questions, you ask them um, right now so that they can get attached to the frequently asked questions addendum. Otherwise, you can email me. I'll type my email 
in the chat box here for Max or our um, online, uh, I don't even know what you would call it, like our, our main email at CED. Um, okay, we have another chat in the Q&A. Um, sorry, another question. Is there a chart for the budget available for each of the funding streams? Um, so we do not provide a specific amount of funding per funding stream. A couple of reasons for that is this is really based off the quality of the applications we received. There's no, there's no rule or regulation that says we have to um, attach funding to a project. So that's one reason why we do not do that. The second is we are constantly reevaluating our program income. So that's the money that's coming in off of old loans. And so um, let's say I say, hey, we only have $3 million available, but all of a sudden um, we're projected to get more funding in from program income. Um, if I would have said that number, then I'm not able to attach that program income to a project. Um, so we really try to keep it flexible so that we have the most uh, capacity to attach funds to projects. So no chart for that. Um, again, no minimum or maximum request amounts in this solicitation. Well, if there's no more questions, the next step will be, we'll be downloading all, all the questions we received today over chat, Q&A, or if we spoke in person, will be um, and any questions we receive over the next week over email uh, will be added to the Q&A, sorry, to the FAQ. And we will post that on ramseycounty.us slash housing investments. So that's open to the general public to see what we spoke about today. Um, in the coming days, prior. I'm guessing by the end of the week or so, um, we'll have this webinar posted on the website as well. So you can always go back to this as a resource and you'll see the slide deck from this as well. And that will be posted. Um, so, uh, but in the meantime, you're able to download the current version of the solicitation notice that's un 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 uh, unamended at this time. Download that, start working on your application, looking through, um, uh, looking through the questions and required materials. And you can start to begin that in that process. So, um, um, so we'll, that'll be kind of our next steps and your next steps. Uh, we have one more question. Um, what criteria does the county consider for deciding whether funding will be a grant or a loan? Great question. So um, some of those are funding specific requirements. Um, so like for ARPA, we already know exactly what type of loan structure that'll be in that's been decided by the federal requirements and then in turn interpretation of those requirements. Um, for areas where we as county staff and a county board have flexibility in determining loan or grant, uh, we look at if the entity is a, um, a private entity or a public or nonprofit entity. Um, and we also look at the use of the funds. So a rehab, let's say of a nonprofit or public building uh, would probably result in a grant um, because of its um, public service in nature, right? Um, a new construction by a private entity uh, may result in a loan with an interest rate. Um, it really depends on the type of user and the type of applicant, as well as we dig into the proof pro forma um, and underwrite your pro forma as well. And so as we're underwriting, we look at how much uh, projected cash flow there is. And let's say that a private developer has very healthy cash flow for their um, development, then we may determine, hey, they can definitely sustain a loan and that and they actually have enough income where that loan can have an interest rate. Mm -hmm. And so we're really trying to be stewards of the public dollar here and make sure that um, we're looking at it from a financial standpoint as well as kind of a mission standpoint.
right, well, that brings us to the end of today's webinar. Thank you for joining us if you were able to join us today. Um, if you were not able to join us, please feel free to review the recording um, on our housing investments website, as well as the slide deck, which will be posted alongside it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to send them to me via email. Um, and I will make sure that I put them up as a part of the addendum. As a, again, I will not be answering any project specific questions or we as Ramsey County will not be answering any project specific questions as the solicitation is open. So if you ask me a project specific question, I may make that question more uh, general and then apply it to the frequently asked questions document uh, generally. And I won't answer you personally. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Have a great day.